With Dana McKay, Reed Shepard, and Natalie Rodriguez from our newsroom, and John Momola, we have a ton to get to this hour. Some tremendous guests lined up. We'll go to Jacksonville. We'll go to Temple Terrace in the Tampa Bay area. We've got Weather Channel meteorologist Mark Dibodeau. We've got uh, Jamie Rome, the deputy director for the National Hurricane Center. And we've got executive director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Kevin Guthrie is going to join us at 830. He just did a press conference with Governor DeSantis a little while ago. Uh, but we will talk to him one-on-one -on -one and get the latest on the state response. Yeah, we've got the 8 o'clock advisory out from the National Hurricane Center. Milton close to making landfall right along the coast of West Central Florida. Location about 27.2 uh, north, 82.8 west, 20 miles west-southwest of Sarasota, now 130 miles or so southwest of uh, Orlando with maximum sustained wind still at 120 miles per hour. So we didn't expect that to change too much. Mm -hmm. It's still going in an east-northeasterly direction at 15 miles per hour so that has not changed and no new advisory so we're still under the same storm surge warnings yeah. hurricane warnings and watches and the tropical storm warning which extends all the way down to florida keys we're going to get uh, a full update at 11 o'clock so the uh, more detailed updates come in at 11 and 5 so 11 p.m 5 a.m 11 a.m and 5 p.m uh, this is the latest though and we've got a major hurricane that's going to make landfall uh, any moment. I mean, it seems like uh, we're, we're just moments away, probably within the next half hour. Yeah, we uh, started talking about like 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. Then yeah. it became 10 p.m. Uh, it's 8.05 right now. It's mm -hmm. I, the, north, uh, the northern eye wall has already come ashore. So it's it could be at any time. And this is why we were encouraging everyone to get to where they needed to be earlier today, because this is what can happen. All of a sudden, you yeah, think the storm starts moving faster yeah. and the conditions really started to deteriorate a lot sooner than I think some of us expected. Right. Well, just think if if you hadn't gotten to where you were going to ride this storm out and you figured, all right, uh, well, the storm's not going to hit until the middle of the night, you know, uh, Thursday morning, I've got most to Wednesday to get my stuff together. Well, then all of a sudden you've got tornado warnings popping up all over the state right. and you're trying to get things in order. Uh, that's that's not a good situation. So hopefully it seemed like most people uh, took the storm really seriously. And it's a good thing because we're dealing with a major hurricane yet again, making landfall here in Florida. The second major hurricane to hit Florida, the Gulf Coast of Florida, head on in like two weeks. In two weeks, in two I know. Weeks. It is really, really crazy. It's, I mean, when you just step back and think about that for a second, uh, two major hurricanes in two weeks. Mind boggling. Mind -boggling. It really is. And we, we said for the past couple of months since hurricane season started, there were these expectations it was going to be a very active hurricane season. It didn't really seem to be the case for a while. And now uh, it's it's not only active, but it's devastating. Yeah. Uh, it's, it really is devastating the state. I'm looking at uh, some of the, the images that are coming out from different parts of the state. Uh, at the University of South Florida in Tampa, you've got stormwater overwhelming drainage systems. You know, we're, we're obviously very focused on the storm surge, um, but I'm telling you, I think like the tornadoes have become a big story with this storm. I think uh, it's going to be these flash flood warnings and, and flooding from the heavy rainfall that parts of our state are going to be experiencing. I think that's going to be another big headline, too. Yeah, and, October uh, and, storms. And I've got some new storm surge uh, projections okay. from the National what Hurricane Center. Uh, Anna Maria Island to Boca Grande, 9 to 13 feet. Anne Claude River to Anna Maria Island, 6 to 9 feet. Tampa Bay, 6 to 9 feet. That's down from 10 to 15 which we were projecting yesterday but in the worst case scenario. If it's the high end, you're yes. still talking yeah. about higher storm surge than Helene, Helene which was about seven feet. Helene was record breaking, mm -hmm. yeah. Boca Grande to Bonita Beach, eight to 12 feet. Charlotte Harbor, eight to 12 feet. Bonita Beach to Chokoloski, five to eight feet. Chokoloski to Flamingo, three to five feet. Sebastian Inlet to Altamaha Sound, Georgia, three to five feet. Yankee Town to Anclote River, two to four feet. The Dry Tortugas, two to four feet. And the St. John's River, which you were pointing out earlier, Natalie, flows north. And they, they might not see this for a couple of days yet, but they're talking about a two to four foot storm surge. You know, we've seen flooding in the center of the state. We've seen flooding in Jacksonville. I remember, uh, I think it was Hurricane Irma, uh, where all of a sudden Jacksonville was getting flooded, and I don't think anybody really expected that. Uh, there is a flash flood uh, warning in effect for the Tampa Bay area right now, but the projections are 
that there's going to be flash flooding taking place really that I-4 corridor uh, stretching from the Tampa Bay area up through Orlando over to Daytona Beach because that's where the northern eye wall, the most severe weather, is going to be headed. Right now, the northern eye wall is sitting over uh, Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, Pasco County, and Hernando County. But as the storm inches closer uh, to the coastline and makes its way inland, that northern eye wall is going to cross right or over the Orlando area, probably as, as a Category 2 or uh, thereabouts once it hits Orlando. And it's still projected, I believe, to exit the state as a hurricane. Uh, it's not, it's not going to uh, lose uh, that much intensity, uh, even over, you know, that much land. Uh, we're talking about landfall being imminent. You know, that's going to be one question I'll have to ask uh, Mark Thibodeau from the Weather Channel when we talk to him uh, coming up in about 20 minutes from now. Like, what is the exact criteria for what landfall? What is landfall? Is it, yeah. is it like in football when it's any part of football touches the goal line, it's a touchdown? Like, you know, what exactly is that criteria when they finally call <laughs> it question. and say it's made landfall? Uh, that was the analogy that came to mind. It's always a football <laughs> analogy with you. Always. I mean, yeah. he's got a he's got a good point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the power outage numbers were now over five hundred thousand people across the state of Florida without power. The most significant power outages are in Hernando County, uh, then also Pasco County and Pinellas County as well, Manatee County. There are a lot of power outages there and in Lafayette County uh, for some reason. There, there are a couple of uh, ones, uh, Indian River County, Martin County, uh, a lot of power outages. So you can see like, you know, almost in the, the Big Bend part of the state, uh, the west coast of Florida, then over to the east coast, uh, lots of power outages. That's going to continue. That's why we're encouraging you to make sure you have iHeartRadio on one of your devices. This way, when the power goes out, you can listen to us uh, that way and you can keep up to date with everything that's happening. I want to go to the hotline now and bring in our good friend. We've got uh, we've got hosts from across the state that we'll be checking in with throughout the course of this Operation Stormwatch coverage. And I want to bring in right now Froggy from the Elvis Duran Show and WKIK <laughs> in Jacksonville, who's with us. Froggy, it's uh, it's so great to talk to you. How are you faring up there in Jacksonville? Uh, you, it looks like you're getting some rain, and, and you will be getting some severe weather soon enough. Yeah, it's just been raining pretty much uh, most of the day. I'd say it started raining probably around 10, 11 o'clock this morning. It started raining, and we're getting some rain bands every now and then. You get one of those where it rains real hard, and it's windy, and then it kind of stops. We're getting that. Uh, Low-lying areas in South St. John County, uh, St. Augustine, St. Augustine Beach, starting to see some flooding now because it has been raining all day long. Um, so we're concerned about those areas as the storm passes and throws the water back up in uh, here. Black Creek and Clay County, also another place we're worried about flooding. That's going to be the biggest issue yeah. here is probably flooding uh, because of the rain and the storm surge, I think more than the winds because they have uh, they canceled the hurricane watch in Duval County. Uh, we are down to a tropical storm watch. So I don't think we're going to see heavy winds, but we are going to see a ton of rain. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I've covered so many hurricanes in, in recent years, uh, but it was Irma where there was the significant flooding in Jacksonville, right? Yes, it was Matthew uh, in 2017 okay. and, uh, and Irma as well. Both we had uh, significant flooding, especially along the beaches. Yeah, uh, Irma, if you remember, kind of split the state, just uh, went down. I was in Miami for that storm. It went across mm -hmm. between the Keys and Miami. And then it went up the state, kind of split us. Matthew, on the other hand, stayed out in the ocean and kind of skirted, and it threw a lot of water up in here. And so that's the thing is, is most of it, as you know, uh, the storm surge does more, way more damage than the wind does oh, unless yeah. you're inside uh, the 20, 30 miles of that eye wall. Were people in Jacksonville taking this seriously? Uh, what were you seeing when you were out and about? They were. I noticed that the uh, our roads were, were packed, and that a lot of that was due to people uh, evacuating yep. from Central Florida, the, the Tampa Bay area. People, you, you could either go way south, go to Miami, or you could go north. Um, so we saw a lot. But here in Jacksonville, I uh, drove to the radio station uh, about an hour ago, and there's nobody on the road. So people had heeded the warnings. Um, I don't understand the people that are oh man they they got us all worked up over nothing again i'm like listen you know i i've got as you know lots of friends that live in the tampa bay area 
and they lost a lot during the league, but it was 110 miles offshore. You have to take every storm serious, and when you do dodge a bullet and you don't get the damage that they've told you could happen, consider it a blessing, consider yourself lucky, because it won't always be that way. Yeah, you are you spent a lot of time, uh, obviously, in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, what are your thoughts just on a storm? It looks like it's going to make landfall uh, right around Sarasota. Really, could be any minute, but uh, Tampa getting pounded. Uh, Tampa, St. Pete with the northern eye wall. And, and this was, has always been the big concern uh, for the Tampa Bay area, that, that almost direct hit. Now, the absolute worst would have been if the uh, eye had passed uh, through probably Pasco County or Northern Pinellas County. Um, but still, uh, this was the one where uh, Tampa didn't quite luck out like we have with so many other storms. Yeah, you know, it's it's. I grew up uh, in the St. Petersburg area. I grew up in Shore Acres, uh, which is a low lying area. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. Shore Acres gets oh, flooded. Uh, yeah, it's like it drizzles outside. <laughs> right, exactly. So we would get, you know, I remember times when I was a kid, we didn't need to go to the grocery store. My mom would want to run to Publix, and we couldn't get out of our neighborhood because our house didn't have water, but you couldn't drive in Shore Acres. So we used to always say that if this, if a storm ever does come up the mouth of the Tampa Bay, uh, Shore Acres in that area was going to be in trouble. And then we saw it, what, 10, 12 days ago with Helene off the coast throwing the water into all those, the barrier islands there of the beaches, Reddington and Madeira Beach and, and uh, Treasure Island and, and Pasa Grill and all the way up to Dunedin. Uh, that whole area, they really took a beating with the storm surge. And it did look for a couple of days like this storm was going to be the one that everybody's talked about. Mm -hmm. And thank God it's not. I, I feel bad for our fellow Floridians that are in uh, Palmetto, Bradenton, Sarasota. They are taking the, the brunt of, of Milton now when the storm surge is going to be catastrophic wherever it does come ashore. Yeah. But Tampa looks to have not completely dodged a bullet, but have dodged what the worst case scenario that we were thinking just 48 hours ago. Yeah, we're looking at the storm surge potential uh, right now, and it's about six to nine feet for uh, the Tampa Bay area, nine to 13 feet uh, from Sarasota uh, into uh, Fort Myers. So if, if it had been, if that surge number had been a little higher in the Tampa Bay area, that was, uh, that was the worry. Um, but uh, I gotta tell you what we're, what we're seeing and hearing right now, uh, some really, really severe weather just sitting over, uh, again, Hillsboro, Pinellas, Pasco, uh, Hernando, and Polk County. Um, Froggy, it's so great to talk to you. We thank you for taking a few minutes to come on with us. And uh, we definitely want to check back in. If, if the situation deteriorates in Jacksonville, please let us know. You got it. I appreciate you having me on. Good to talk to you. And uh, if anything changes here, I will definitely check back in. All right. Sounds good. Again, that's Froggy from the Elvis Duran Show and WQIK in Jacksonville. Uh, we'll go to the Tampa Bay area in just a moment and check in with one of our other hosts uh, to get a sense as to uh, what it's like right now as the northern eye wall just sits over that part of the state. Yeah, I'm seeing now that in Bradenton, there's a video that shows glass breaking uh, on mm. building because the winds are so strong right now. And then also on our text line at 97720, a lot of people in Northport saying, uh, you know, lost power in Northport. It's very gusty in Northport. Uh, can you tell me when the winds are going to die down in Northport? So it sounds like that area is yeah. really getting hit hard right now with that wind. Yeah, uh, Northport uh, is is taking a, the part of the brunt of this storm. Uh, you've got areas like Gulfport uh, where there's a lot of flooding, shore acres, like Froggy was just saying, lots of concern there, especially with the amount of rainfall that we see. So there's a couple different things. There's a storm surge, there's rainfall, there's uh, just a lot of different factors at play that are going to lead to a lot of flooding. And that's why it was so important for people who were in those uh, flood zones, in those evacuation zones, uh, to get out. And hopefully uh, just about everybody heeded those warnings. Let's go back to the hotline. And I want to bring in another one of our iHeartRadio hosts, Pat Donovan from our sports station, 95.3 WDAE in Tampa is with us. He's coming to us from Temple Terrace. Pat, it's great to talk to you. So the northern eye wall really sitting right over your region. Uh, what are you seeing and hearing out there? So you know what it feels like right now is an elongated summer storm. No lightning, no thunder, mm -hmm. but just a lot of rain. And honestly, I'm not even really seeing much wind out here. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little windy, but it doesn't feel like 
a hurricane from from where we are here in Temple Terrace. Are you outside right now? I did. I stepped outside. I thought it was good for the attack. And, uh, he wants to be too scary. Uh, you really shouldn't be outside right now. Go back He's inside. He's making a burger. No, I'm telling you, in Temple Terrace, it is very, very Ukrainian. And that's it. It's very safe. All right, that's good. Well, we're glad to hear that. Uh, is your power still on? My power is still on. We we had it flicker like once or twice, mm. maybe an hour or two ago, and uh, that's about it. That's a bad feeling when the power flickers. You just, you're like, you know it it's is, coming. It is. You're just yeah. waiting you for it. You know it's coming. Yeah. Uh, so what was your plan to ride out the storm? Any concerns like on your property of trees or, or anything like that that you have we, to be worried about? We do. We do have a couple of giant oak trees in our backyard that I think it would take like an act of God to knock over. But there are a couple of decent sized branches that hang over our house. And we have one... I don't know if it's a custom window or whatever the hell it is, but we have a window in the back of our home that's probably 12 feet wide. And that's my one concern is, God forbid, something would have smashed that window. I have no idea how I'd ever get it replaced. Now, did you prepare? So are you set if you lose power for a couple of days and, and all of that? Oh, yeah. We're as prepared as we can be. We even have our mother-in-law over here for entertainment. My oh, mother-in-law over here for entertainment. Boy. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're ready to go if the bleep hits the fan, but, uh, it, it feels at least at this point, like we're kind of be the lucky ones again. Well, now I know why you're outside to get the mother-in-law in the house. You know how to live. You're outside and you got the mother-in-law for entertainment. I, I, you can't top that. Uh, Pat Donovan <laughs> from 95.3 WDAE in Temple Terrace with us. Pat, really appreciate it. Stay safe. And if things change, let us know. Anytime, guys. All right, take a look at some of the storm surge uh, numbers. Natalie, uh, you've got that, and we're starting to see, uh, especially for Myers, Naples, some significant numbers coming in. Yeah, we have been, and uh, just by the looks of things outside, uh, really, Bradenton, Sarasota, yeah. Uh, Fort Myers, they're starting to get those those storm surge rising. And let's see, tracking conditions in Sarasota as well. The latest peak storm surge forecast was, and we've been talking about how it's still high, but coming in a lot lower than what was anticipated. Five to eight feet in Chokoloski, uh, eight to 12 feet in Bonita Beach, Tampa Bay, six to nine feet right now. Yeah, and we just got done with Helene, which again was was about seven feet. So hopefully it's on the low ends, but uh, if not, uh, there's going to be you know a lot more significant flooding. No, definitely. Where Jim Cantori is in Charlotte Harbor, they're still getting eight to 12 feet storm surge. Wow. And it looks like uh, just about all of that is in the park. I mean, that parking garage that he's in, it's... It's uh, where he's at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like an ocean there. Uh, there's a new low pressure record that's been set for Sarasota. So, of course, Sarasota, that's that's where the center of this storm is uh, going to make landfall. Uh, and this has been a record storm in so many different ways. Uh, it's it's right up there among the strongest storms that we've ever seen, uh, you know, in the Atlantic, in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, how low the pressure got, how high the wind speeds got at one point, up to how, 180 how miles per hour. How quickly it went from a Category yeah. 1 to a Category 5. It's just right. a matter of, uh, like, what, four hours? hours? Right. Yeah, yeah, just a matter of about four hours. And, yeah. And not many storms have done what uh, Milton has done, where it was Category 5, it lost some intensity, and then it ramped right back up to a Category 5. Luckily, the forecasts were right that uh, the intensity decreased to a Category 3 as it's about to make landfall. Unfortunately, that's still a major hurricane and it's still going to do a lot of damage. And uh, it is just really hitting the Tampa Bay area pretty hard right now with some severe weather. And it looks like uh, just south, I want to say, let me zoom in here because there is uh, one spot in particular that looks concerning. And that spot is just north of Bradenton, just south and to the east of Pinellas Park in St. Pete. And it looks like that is going to make its way towards Tampa, uh, Riverview, Brandon, and uh, Temple Terrace. Perhaps uh, Pat should have uh, waited before he gave his optimistic uh, view of, of the storm. So again, we're monitoring everything really closely and we're keeping an eye on the flash flood warnings that have been coming through and the any potential tornado warnings as well. Let's go to the hotline and bring in Weather Channel meteorologist Mark Thibodeau once again. Mark, it's great to talk to you. So landfall seems to be imminent. 
how do you determine when landfall is made? What's the criteria for that? The, the analogy I used earlier, is it like in, in football where you just need any part of the ball to hit the goal line and it's a touchdown? No, it has to be at least half the eye has to be. Oh, okay. So that's like yeah. the whole that's foot. The yes. Yeah. Half the okay. eye, okay. So half, yeah, yeah if, you have, if you have a you know a size 12 foot like mine, at least six inches of my foot has to get over. <laughs> Got it. Um, okay. You know, but uh, it's, um, yeah, you have to have half of the eye on shore. And I think that's going to be pretty soon here. This is, you know, this is really sped up from earlier today. The original computer modeling was saying that the, uh, was saying that it was going to slow down a little. Yeah, we know. We weren't supposed to be on the air right now. We were supposed to come on at 10. Uh, we had to speed everything up because of this storm. So we're right. well aware it's, it's, it's moving been, fast. It's still moving northeast at 15 miles an hour. This is a very misbehaved hurricane. Uh, moving, It's moving northeast at uh, 15 miles an hour. Uh, the winds are still 120. The pressure is 28.11 inches, 952 millibars. It still breaks the home barometer on the low side. Very, very low pressure. 140 miles southwest of Orlando. 35 miles southwest of Sarasota. Of course, that was with the uh, that was with the 8 p.m. So I think I believe that it's probably. Let me just click here because I'm getting updates so frequently. Let's see here. Now it is okay. 20 miles southwest of Sarasota. 130 southwest of Orlando. Moving northeast at 15 120 mile per hour winds. Those are the particulars on it. Um, we have an extreme wind warning here that's going to go on for just a bit longer. It's going to be for Manatee County as well as Hillsborough and Pinellas County. Uh, that is with that northern eye wall. It's lashing Tampa Bay right now, heading up through um, basically towards St. Petersburg right now. They're getting hit by the northern eye wall. So landfall will follow that. So I think it's going to be within a half an hour. That center is going to be at least halfway on shore. Uh, the winds are responding, uh, of course, 54 miles an hour gusting to 77 in St. Petersburg International Airport right now. Uh, Tampa is 33 gusting to 59. And Sarasota, believe it or not, the winds have come down slightly. When I say slightly, I mean slightly. 40 gusting to 73. Last hour, Sarasota was gusting to 93 wow. miles an hour. Mm. So that is that, that is very solid hurricane conditions going on. It's not 120, but that's that's getting into almost cat two conditions. Um, you know, when we say, I want to clarify something too. When we say the winds are 120 miles an hour, that's over a very small area, an isolated spot. That doesn't mean the whole hurricane is 120 miles an hour. That's only in a small section. In this case, it would be on the northern side because this is a north-loaded hurricane. All the weather's on the north side. There's not a whole lot going on on the south side weather-wise. However, that being said, you know, our own Jim Cantori is in Charlotte Harbor right now. Well, we see. He's in a parking yeah, we, garage. We've been watching. He's getting a surge. Yeah, he's getting a surge right now. So that's even though there's not a lot of rain falling, it's windy. The winds are coming from the wrong direction. What I mean by that is they're starting to turn around to the west a little bit. And so what that's doing, they're south at 51, gusting to 79 in Punta Gorda right now. South wind, so that's coming right up the length of Charlotte Harbor. And what that does is that brings that water level up. I don't have an official water level rise component yet. I'm waiting for the Hurricane Center to send that out. They have not yet. But I guarantee that we are probably going to get potentially a 10-foot surge into Punta Gorda, essentially. Mm. Wow. Uh, and, and through Charlotte Harbor because the center is going to the west and north of Charlotte Harbor a little bit. So they're on that south side of the hurricane. Even though it's the drier side in this case, the winds are coming in fast, gusting to hurricane force, and they're coming in due south. So that's pushing all that water up through Charlotte Harbor and pushing it right towards Port Charlotte as well as uh, some of the surrounding areas around it. Um, the, the areas around that hold that whole area, all those towns around there are, are going to be seeing water come in here very soon. Venice, you're not off the hook either because the winds are going to go kind of west-southwest here, so that's going to push the water up on Venice Beach. And then Inglewood too, not so old Inglewood especially, not totally off the hook either. We could see a surge coming in here as well. We might be. We're still waiting to get official numbers. And again, Tampa Bay, don't let your guard down here either because we're getting those very strong winds coming in now. And the winds right now are northeast still at uh, Elbert Witted, but I'll tell you what, as we get that center swinging north, they're going to start coming around more uh, to the southeast a little bit, and that could push water up into old Tampa Bay as well as Tampa Bay as well. So 120 miles an hour, moving right towards Sarasota. The center is north of the center. That's where your worst weather is. To the south, you got wind. You don't have a whole lot of rain, but you still have a surge potential. And we still have that extreme wind warning that goes on for just a bit longer. Uh, for the the, the Tri-County area, Hillsborough, Pinellas, as well as Manatee. We could have winds gusting up to 
90, 100 miles an hour within that northern eye wall. And we've seen that already around Sarasota. And those kind of, those winds could be happening and not even being reported at various locations because we don't have stations everywhere, but they could be happening on St. Petersburg. And it could be happening just south of Tampa a little bit based on the way the radar reflectivity works. So now this hurricane overnight, it's going to die across the Florida Peninsula. And by 7 a.m. tomorrow or 8 a.m. tomorrow, it's going to be offshore the Atlantic, offshore the Atlantic side of Florida. And it's going to grow in size. The wind field is going to grow. It's interacting with the fronts of the north and west. So we have the tropical storm warnings all the way up through coastal Georgia and the low country of South Carolina. You'll have a tropical storm force east wind in those areas tomorrow. That could push water into Savannah. Could see a two to four foot surge there. We could see a decent surge from Jacksonville, maybe up to St. John's River and further down to the Palm Coast as well. St. Augustine could get a good surge. In fact, if you look at the Atlantic observations right now on the other side, it's already starting to gust pretty soon. We're 16 gusting to 25 at Cocoa Beach, but I did see a location earlier, like Daytona right now is 36 gusting to 58 miles an hour. And you know, they're about 150, 160 yeah. miles still from the center of this hurricane. So, so that's what I mean by the tropical storm force winds are really expanding as this moves in. It's becoming a larger storm. It's a weaker storm. A small core of hurricane winds, a huge tropical storm force wind field. Orlando, your turn overnight, unfortunately, as this moves across the I-4 corridor, we could see gusts of hurricane force, trees down, extended power outages all across central Florida, especially along the I-4 corridor. So let's be very careful overnight, hunker down, things get better around, then we can get out of the steps a little bit. Mark, you said something a little bit earlier that kind of jogged my memory about describing the way the storm has formed and the way that it's moved across the Gulf. It's This has actually been a very unique hurricane in a lot of ways, hasn't it? It really has because we don't often see a hurricane. We see hurricanes developing in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, but typically when that happens, most of the time the steering pattern is in the upper atmosphere. They either move into Mexico or they move towards the Texas coast. To have something go across the entire Gulf of Mexico like that from west of the Yucatan Peninsula and down in the Bay of Campeche, basically, and then go east, northeast, all the way to the Gulf side of Florida is really unusual because even Hurricane Charlie, that formed down kind of at the edge of the Western Caribbean and then shot up very quickly in strength and went straight north right up through. We all know what that did. That was a horrendous hurricane for, uh, for Punta Gorda and the Charlotte Harbor area. Uh, just total destruction. But then, you know, Cape Coral, Fort Myers, it's a lot less of a hurricane there. It just had some gusty winds uh, and some rain. But this one, yeah, to go across the whole Gulf, become a Cat 5, max out, uh, it was actually nearing mathematical limits on this side of the hemisphere. The pressure went down to 897 millibars a couple nights ago. That's right. almost an all-time low for the Gulf. The lowest pressure is Hurricane Wilma that we had. 20 years ago, I believe it was 2005, we had Hurricane Wilma, and that had an 882 millibar pressure. That's ear-popping pressure, and so is 897 for that matter. But then what happened was the move east uh, started feeling a trough from the north. So that started shearing it, and then at the same time, as you get one of these troughs, you usually have dry air spilling in at the same time. So that cut off the south end of the hurricane. It didn't cut the wind field out, but it cut the rain out a little bit. That's why we're getting more wind in Cape Coral and Fort Myers and the north loaded side where the rain stayed, where the shear didn't get to in the dry air. We're getting very heavy rain and we're getting very strong winds too. But it's been unique because, you know, here it is, it bombed out to 180, 185 miles an hour, came across, held strength for a while, came in weakening, but still a three. And uh, now we basically have, I'm not saying we have half a hurricane, but this is all north. And to the south, it's still weathery, but it's not, you know, the weather that's going on in St. Petersburg is a lot worse right now than what's going on in Cape Coral, for instance. Yeah, no so, question. Weather still, I would say Lee Island Coast, we got to watch for a surge there, too. Weather Channel meteorologist Mark Thibodeau with us tonight. Mark, thanks so much for the update. We'll talk to you in about an hour. Okay, thanks. All right, now let me switch gears, and I want to bring in Executive Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, Kevin Guthrie, joins us. Director Guthrie, thank you so much for coming back on. We saw you with Governor Ron DeSantis a little earlier, about an hour ago, uh, during that press conference. Uh, but just to speak to those who maybe uh, didn't catch that, uh, what are your messages tonight as Hurricane Milton is about to make landfall in Sarasota? But Ryan, thanks for having me on. The message right now is if you're in Sarasota County, you're uh, Manatee County, uh, Pinellas, uh, Hillsborough, you know, that, that area that's getting heavily impacted right now is to stay right where you are. You do not need to try to get out and go into this. Um, please make sure you shelter in place and get to a, an area of your home. 
that is uh, central away from doors and windows, hunker down and, and ride this thing out. If you are in an area that's a two-story building and you're susceptible to storm surge, make sure you're doing that on the second floor, not on the first floor, just in case you get some type of water inundation. You, we don't want you, uh, you know, down there in the water. We want you up a little bit higher. Um, beyond that, Ryan, I, I, I think I go back to your previous caller. Um, you know, this is a really, really interesting storm in that the entire bottom and even portions of the east side of the storm have got a dry slot in it, and it's. Um, it's not the quote unquote dirty side of the storm, if you will. Yeah. All of this weather is to the north. And I, when I say to the north, it's like to the state line north, if not even beyond. So this is a very interesting um, hurricane for us. Um, it's about, I, guess, I, I think that comes up what you and I have been talking about over the last three three days now. Is it's just been interesting the way that it formed, the way that it's you know gone up to Cat 5, down to Cat 3, making landfall a little bit south of where they projected. But nevertheless, um, a lot of rainfall again, but the, the the message of the day right now, especially for those in the impact area, um, is going to be shelter in place. But also, again, I know some of your listening area over on the east coast, uh, you know, Miami, Broward, and and so on. We we had uh, just a plethora of tornadic activity. Yeah. You know, about four hours ago, hundred plus uh, tornado warnings, nearly twenty radar indicated tornado signatures on the ground uh, with debris in the radar signature. Um, you know, lots of damage, lots of destroyed homes, several people, or not several, but lots of people take it to the hospital, some of them potentially serious injuries. So again, same thing that we're talking about here, Ryan, is if you're in, you get a tornado warning, get to the center of your house, get to that um, location with no windows, put some type of a uh, heavy clothing or a, a light mattress, heavy blankets over the top of you and protect yourself from the elements. Uh, Kevin, could you speak uh, a little bit to the power outage situation throughout the state and uh, more to the point about the recovery effort that's been put in place? The last number I saw was something in excess of 40,000 crews were already mobilized and in place ready to restore the power once the storm passed. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so I'm, I'm just getting the announcement. They just made uh, clear, declared landfall at Siesta Key. So, Ryan, you got that we information. It. There it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was um, good timing. So, That's exactly yeah. what we planned on, Kevin. That's why we had you uh, booked Thank for uh, 833. Uh, there you go, Ryan. I appreciate that shout out. Um, so on the power outages, you know, I, I think the last number I remember hearing before I came in here was probably about 100, 120,000. But uh, the number of... Um, resources that we have amassed for this is now a, a Florida history, historical record. It's uh, 53,000, 54,000 that we have uh, resources that are already um, on stage in the area. So we're gonna get after it, you know, we how we do it in Florida, we, uh, you know, we go full throttle. And um, we, we're, so we're gonna get out there, we're gonna get after it. My goal, you know, this is a goal, I set goals for my team all the time. Let's try to have 85% of the power restored in 48 to 72 hours with 95% restored in 72 to 96 hours. So that's a goal that I set internally for our team. I I don't mind sharing that with you. I think it's important for us to set goals and expectations and try to achieve them. Um, If you don't, we just get complacent with meteorocracies. But that's that's what we do here in Florida. We set goals, we try to uh, go out and achieve them, and then we try to set records and beat them. Kevin, it's Natalie. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and, and for being just always so accessible. I know we've talked about power outages and storm surge and tornadoes. One of the things that, that stands out for me with Milton is water safety, water quality, bacteria that's been associated with this storm. What can you say on that? Yeah, Natalie, well, I, you know, I give it to my comm staff. Uh, they love it when I use the term water, uh, flood waters are gross. So, um, they, uh, but they are. I mean, let, let's just talk about it. I'm, I'm a North Florida kind of guy, so I'll just go out and say um, flood waters are gross. Um, there's a lot of, you know, especially now with the debris that was on the on the right of ways, and, uh, and especially that Pazellas, Tampa Bay area, all of that's going to be mixing back in with the water that's coming in the storm surge, the Tampa Bay waters that are coming up on, uh, you know, the Bay Shore in that area. Um, what people don't realize, you know, and I know, you know, when, when I was a kid, the people go out and play in the street water after it rained. Yeah, they, we, we, we certainly did. Uh, but at the same time, uh, getting a cut, uh, you know, something you, you're, you're going down the middle of the street, you're, you're knee deep water, uh, you get a cut of something that's floating there or rusty nail or something like that, and you're in that mixed water, um, 
the water quality is not great. The last thing I want anybody to do is end up getting some type of infection and then ultimately lead to potentially an amputation uh, because they, you know, we just didn't, we, we didn't do things that were very smart. So I think we need to, uh, you know, uh, use caution, do things that are smart, protect yourself from that. But, you know, the, the flood water is, is, is not good, especially with all the mixed debris that we're going to have that was already on the ground. Yeah, and it seems like, and, and final question for you, Director Guthrie, and thanks again for your time. It seems like uh, earlier in the day, obviously, the tornado warnings, that was the big story with Hurricane Milton. But it seems like moving forward, it's going to be the storm surge, obviously, in the west coast of Florida. And then also, and this could extend uh, far inland, uh, the flooding uh, from the rainfall, a lot of flash flood warnings happening right now. Yeah, um, and, and Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and add to your bingo card uh, East Coast storm surge, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Yeah, you're right on with the uh, West Coast storm surge. I think we're definitely going to have some areas around Port Charlotte, uh, maybe Tampa Bay again. You know, there was a lot of outflow in Tampa Bay, so yeah. that's going to be interesting to see how that plays. But um, then, to your point, the Central Florida flooding, we've already had, and this was, uh, I got the 515 briefing from the National Hurricane Center. We had already had seven to eight inches of widespread rain throughout the entire peninsula. There was one hydrologist calling for potentially isolated pockets of 16. That starts to rival numbers that we got for Hurricane Ian into Central Florida. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see how that sets up. But if you look at this bigger radar signature, you see that way offshore lightning heavy lightning that was the tornadoes that you mentioned ryan now coming and wrapping back into north northeast florida that's going to be an interesting developing story to watch i think you're going to we're going to have more storm surge you know three to five feet up there in that you know uh Volusia county flagler county st john's county duval county nassau county area that's going to be interesting to watch and then also that's all real vulnerable still from hurricane nicole daytona beach shores daytona beach itself um, we still got a lot of coastal erosion there. So that may be a developing story that we need to watch in the next day or two. All right. Executive Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, Kevin Guthrie, with us. Director Guthrie, we always appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on, and thanks for timing that out. So we had the announcement of landfall while you were with us. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you, Ryan and Natalie. All right. Again, uh, official landfall, 833 in siesta key uh i guess uh, according to you know what we heard from uh weather channel meteorologist mark thibodeau half the uh, eye of the storm it must has have now passed way, yes uh, into siesta key um a couple things i want to get to here there's a lot happening we've got a flash flood warning in effect for tampa st pete and clearwater uh and this extends all the way up into dunedin and oldsmar all the way down to Piney Point and then over covering Sun City Center, Riverview, Brandon and Temple Terrace. That's in place until 1130 tonight. And when you take a look at some of the most uh, severe weather right now, we've we've got multiple things going on. We've got the storm surge that we're monitoring, uh, especially in Port Charlotte, uh, in Fort Myers, Sarasota, a tremendous storm surge there. Uh, and then we also have the northern eye wall with the most severe weather. That is sitting over Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, Polk County, Pasco County, Hernando County, and it's making its way uh, now really into Citrus County. And Orlando is starting to get some pretty severe weather as well. So this really has been a storm that has impacted almost all of the state. Uh, I mean, maybe like Pensacola is sitting out there and they're like, eh, you know, we're good. Um, but just about everywhere else. Uh, including, obviously, the Miami-Dade area for Lauderdale with tornado warnings earlier today. Uh, this has really been something, and just the speed at which it it shifted. We were looking at potentially a 2 a.m. landfall, and we just added at 8.33 tonight. And, and that's why when we're doing storm coverage leading up to landfall, and we mentioned this a number of times, like everything is subject to change, you know, the intensity of the storm, the exact track of the storm, uh, when it's going to make landfall, these things, uh, it's not, an ex there's a lot of science in it, but it's not yeah. an exact science. Right, right. Yeah. exactly. 
predictably unpredictable, I think. Yeah. And then the rainfall, too. Uh, Six-hour rainfall totals in Tampa Bay at least five to eight inches with hour, hourly rainfall in the two to three inches per hour so range expected. Yeah, on the ground that has just already been, been soaked. Yeah, I think I saw six to 12 possible isolated spots could get as much as 18. And, you know, that kind of brings in the fact that you saw, to, to kind of compare and contrast, earlier this year after Debbie, we saw... Places in Manatee and Sarasota County were getting as much as 17 inches of rain. And those neighborhoods in Sarasota County and Manatee were flooded literally for days yeah. afterward. So this is going to be, I guess my point is that this is going to be a very long-term situation with the potential for flooding in some of these areas. According to uh, one of the measurements that we're getting out of Sarasota, uh, there is 10 feet of storm surge in the Sarasota area right now a 10 feet of storm surge and then we've been watching jim cantori uh and he is uh, charlotte harbor uh is that right that's, yes, that's jim yep. uh, and there uh, is just a ton of storm surge there so really uh from the tampa bay area south uh that's where the most significant storm surge is taking place at the moment 10 feet of storm surge and i mentioned earlier let me scroll down here sarasota uh set a new low pressure record tonight and the previous record was set on october 19th 1944 wow it's been that long so since just another record that historic. this storm has broken yeah and i'm seeing now a video of a roof ripped off the bank of america building in bradenton and i mean the roof is just off the building so that strong wind coming through there is doing a lot of damage and uh just a little more uh hurricane history for you here now that milton has made landfall uh, it is the fifth Gulf Coast hurricane landfall this year. You had Beryl, Debbie, Francine, Helene, and now Milton. It ties 2005 and 2020 for the second most Gulf hurricane landfalls on record, trailing only 1886 when there were six Gulf hurricane landfalls. So it's been, it's become a very active season and uh, they all seem to be hitting the Gulf Coast. And I keep saying those October storms. Yeah. The October storms. There's something about October. No, yeah. One thing I heard from uh, Channel 8's uh, chief meteorologist, Jeff Baradelli, not too long ago, was he was kind of taking a 10,000-foot a look at the hurricane season. And he says that this one has seemingly become back-ended. Yeah. Where we still have about a month and a half to go before the traditional end of the season, yet this is the busiest part of it and we may yet achieve that extremely active prediction that we heard back in april and may so we're monitoring uh the radar we're monitoring the storm surge uh we're monitoring all the warnings that are coming in including these flash flood yeah. uh warnings uh you have more uh, the pasco poke citrus uh, Hillsboro, Hernando, Manatee, and Pinellas are under flash flood warnings right now. Yeah. If, what are you experiencing right now? You can text us at 97720 and let us know what's going on. And uh, my internet connection just went out. I was going to read some of the text, but I don't <laughs> have them. <laughs> so, uh, All right. Almost 700,000 power outages now. Yeah. yeah and my, uh, my family is in Riverview right now, and I'm oh. getting texts, my friends and family, that, uh, that the power has gone out and that the wind has gotten really, really bad in the Riverview area in Hillsboro County. So. Uh, uh, well, let me see. Uh, let me check in on my text messages. My mom, uh, she is saying that it, and I'm quoting here, it sounds like a freaking hurricane and she's in Spring Hill, so Hernando County. And my dad texts me that the Mets are moving on. So apparently they won their game. <laughs> you can see where his head's at. Compared to well, my sister-in-law down in home said, what, what's available on Uber Eats? <laughs> That's the text that I got. So. All right. Let me uh, bring in News Channel 8 reporter Ty Russell, who is in Hill. Hillsboro right now uh, in Hillsborough County, along with Pinellas County, Pasco County, Paul Hernando, and now uh, it's reaching into Citrus, dealing with the northern eye wall. Ty, thank you so much for taking a moment to come on with us. So what have you been experiencing over the past hour or so? Yeah, over the past hour, things have really started to worsen. This is when we are seeing the actual hurricane impact. Uh, the wind speeds have picked up. The wind gusts are a lot stronger. Uh, we've been dealing with heavy rainfall for the last like two hours or so. And this is that kind of rain with that strong wind where 
you know, it hits you in the face and it feels it almost like sand. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it hurts you. So that's why uh, officials have been telling people this is the time to really stay indoors uh, because um, the wind speeds and, and are kicking up. And then there's a lot of debris yeah. around on some of the streets as well because officials haven't had the time to clean up from Helene. So it's a really sticky situation right now. But so far, no major reports of uh, any deaths or any major injuries so far at least have you That's seen good. any flooding in the area that you're in are you in a, a flood prone area of hillsborough county yeah i'm in evacuation zone a but the photographer and i we are uh, in a safe spot here okay, good. and the reason why we are in uh, evacuation zone a is because we've been showing our viewers uh in the bay area the hillsborough river we are yards away from the river and so far what we've been seeing is the water rushing out of the bay into the gulf which is a good thing mm -hmm. because in helene i was in the same exact spot and we had to move away because the water rushed in and that caused a lot of the flooding and i mean we're talking uh waist high flooding uh seeping into homes and businesses damaging cars uh that's how uh we got some ev fires because some of that salt water mixed in with those electronics and caused many fires and you know, first responders, they were unable to get to them. So it's a lot different now when it comes to the flooding. However, Hillsborough is expecting more rain uh, this time around because on the side of the eye wall where we are, boy, it's gonna get messy. Now, have you seen people out and about or uh, is it like a ghost town where you are? That's, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping people are in a safe space and they're staying there uh, in terms of uh, those in your area venturing out any of that going on you know when i first arrived to the location where i am which is uh downtown tampa uh, i did see a few people this afternoon uh taking a jog uh, along a river walk here however fortunately for the last like three or four hours i haven't seen anybody the only people who i've seen on streets or driving around were first responders I saw one ambulance with um, flashing lights and a siren, but besides that, it has been a ghost town, and that's exactly what officials want. They want people to stay inside uh, because last time people tried to go out in some of these uh, floodwaters, and guess what? They were swept away or they needed to be rescued. And when the wind speeds get to a certain uh, level, you know, first responders can't go to that area. Uh, because it's dangerous for them it's dangerous for the vehicles so uh people thank goodness helene happened because people are definitely mm -hmm. listening to officials this time around and they are staying off the sidewalks off the streets they are inside ty russell news channel 8 reporter coming to us from hillsborough county with an update ty thank you so much stay safe out there Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. All right. Now let's bring in the deputy director for the National Hurricane Center. Jamie Rome is with us here on our statewide Operation Stormwatch coverage for iHeartRadio. Uh, Jamie, we uh, just announced it. We actually had Kevin Guthrie, uh, the director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management. He made the announcement as he got it. Uh, we have landfall 833 at Siesta Key. That is correct. Uh, that's a little bit to the west of uh, Sarasota. Uh, made landfall with uh, 120 mile per hour winds, uh, 954 millibars, and so that's a you know major major hurricane. Uh, unfortunately, as, as predicted. I feel like we've got a couple of different storylines going on right now. I'm seeing in Sarasota pretty significant storm surge. Uh, we're seeing Naples water levels. Uh, above where they peaked for Helene two weeks ago and still rising. And then we have these flash flood warnings for a large portion of the Tampa Bay area. What what are some of the angles that you're monitoring closely with Milton? Unfortunately, uh, all of the hazards that we sort of uh, feared would happen are unfolding. This sort of speaks to, um, you know, why we can't see a hurricane as a dot on the map. And, and, you know, we have to think of it, you know, in a broader sense. So the heaviest freshwater flooding uh, from rain is occurring along into the north of where the center is tracking. So that's occurring over Tampa, St. Petersburg, effectively the I-4 corridor. And the highest storm surge is occurring you know, near into the south of where it made landfall. So that's, like you said, Sarasota, Venice, Port Charlotte, 
and and it, it, while the peaks are not in the, the the Naples area, they're getting you know very impactful storm surge down there. This is going to continue for the to the next several hours, um, certainly through uh, midnight. So I don't know that we've seen the worst of it yet, um, uh, unfortunately. And um, you know we've even got uh, wind gusts to um, 100 miles per hour in, in uh, Egmont Channel. And then what should those who are in the Orlando area, the villages, Ocala, Daytona Beach, Gainesville, what should they be gearing up for? Because it looks like uh, some of that really extreme weather, it's, it's either making its way through that area right now or it's going to pretty soon. Oh, it's, it's going downhill quickly in Orlando. We're already getting, getting gusts to tropical storm force. And this band of heavy rain is going to ride right along the I-4 corridor. Um, so if you look at all that extreme rainfall that's happening in Tampa, that is going to slide uh, east-northeastward overnight and impact the uh, Orlando area in the next several hours. So you have got to go home. I'm, I'm telling you that the driving conditions in Orlando are going to be treacherous, especially since it is nighttime. You cannot see flooded roads. You cannot see how deep the water is. It is not safe to be out and, and go home as quickly as possible. Jamie, I was kind of waiting, and this is uh, Reed Shepard here. I was kind of waiting until uh, the storm made landfall to ask this question, but maybe it's maybe it's time to uh, uh, to look into it a little bit. As, and that is simply, we had a text earlier uh, this evening from a gentleman down in Venice who was asking, when are things going to improve? When might we see things start to improve not only in the Tampa Bay area, but uh, down to the south of Sarasota where it made landfall. Any any guesstimates on that? Probably after midnight. Uh, you know, we really got to get the winds to not be onshore. So right now, uh, the winds to the south of the center are, are pushing towards land. So they're shoving all that ocean water, you know, towards land. And once those winds come around, uh, you know, more to the north or, or northeast uh, after midnight, uh, that water will start to drain out. Now I will caution though. Sometimes the, the water pulls, you know, once it goes inland, it kind of ponds and pulls. So when people get up in the morning, uh, don't just go out and start wandering around. There could be power lines down in that pulled water. So it still might be say, unsafe to move around even, even tomorrow morning. All right, Jamie Rome, Deputy Director for the National Hurricane Center with us on our iHeartRadio Operation Stormwatch coverage for Florida. Jamie, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, we're getting a lot of texts uh, into 97720. That's how you can text us. Uh, just uh, give us your name, kind of where you're, yeah, where you're at right now. Yeah, let us know where you're at right now because somebody said many of my roof shingles have blown off and a tree fell in my yard. I don't know where this person is, though. So mm -hmm. if you can uh, provide that information where you are, that would be really, really helpful. Uh, somebody said I stayed in my mobile home in Lutz and I've never been so scared in my life. I'm hoping these winds start dying down. Mm. Uh, Bill Dylan Dunedin said we're getting some pretty strong wind gusts and heavy rain. Our power has been flickering on and off, uh, but it's still on in the countryside area. Uh, Lakewood Ranch, lots of scary wind, no power, tucked in a closet with a headlamp and a bike helmet. Uh, somebody said uh, Gardens of Gulf Cove uh, in the center of it in Zone B in East Englewood. Power flickered on and off for several hours and finally went out around 828, uh, saying I don't see any power in the neighborhood. There's no flooding or surge uh, right now, but winds are moderate um, and nothing too, too crazy, but the power is out there. Uh, and then just a lot of people, power out since 530 in Pinellas yeah. Park, flickering lights, but still have power in Venice. So text us at 97720. Let us know what's going on where you are. Yeah, I just got a text from my wife, in fact, who is up in Ohio right now. And she talked to a woman who lives in our community.